In this video, we will discuss exec, exit and POC system calls. As you might have seen in my earlier video, system calls refer to the request made by the application to the operating system to perform certain services on its behalf. So the first system call is exec and it, you can think of it as a short form for execute. Suppose a process P1 is running and it calls the for the system call exec. Now this is a service request to the kernel and as an argument a file name has been passed in this system call. So what the kernel will do is that it will replace this process P1 by this file that has been given as an argument. So now process P1 has been replaced by this file. Note that this file name, this file was as kept as a program on the disk. But now it has been loaded into the memory and it has been converted into a process. So this exec file name replaces the calling process P1 by the file. The next system call is exit. This exit system call, it terminates the process. Suppose this is the process which is running file name and it gives a system call which is exit. Now what the kernel will do because this is a system call that means it is a request to the operating system. So the OS will terminate this process and it will close all the files which were associated with this, with this process and it will also this call will also return an exit status to the operating system which will be sent to the parent process. So what is the parent process? This we will discuss in detail but assuming that each process has a parent in the Unix system. So any time a child process exits, it will send a status value to the, uh, to the parent process. Now if we are having the exec and the exit system calls, Suppose there was a process P1 and it called exec file name. That means this P1 has now been replaced by this particular process which was given as an argument here. Now if this process exits, now the control will not go back to P1 because P1 is not a parent of file name. Of, for this particular process, P1 is not a parent. This P1 has been replaced by file name. So when P1 gave an exec system call, it has been replaced by file name. This P1 does not exist over here. So whenever file name it will exit, this will not give a control or a status back to P1. In this case, P1 is not a parent of this particular process. Now let's take a look at another system call which is fork. Suppose a process P1 is running and it makes a system call fork to the kernel. This fork system call creates an identical copy of the process. So if P1 is here, an identical copy of this process has been created. So now we can say that P1 it has created a child or has forked a child. So P1 is the parent and this new copy that has been created is the child. Now the child process can run and call exec. If the child process calls exec, then it will be replaced by the file name, this file that it has requested. So in this way, any particular process can create a child process by using this system called fork. Now, whenever the child process is created, 
the child process can run so earlier it was an identical copy of the parent process now the child process when it runs it can call exec file name so the child is replaced by this particular process the new process that has been called and whenever this new process will exit it will be removed and now the control will go back to the parent so here was the parent it has forked a child the parent will wait for the child to finish off the child is running the child calls exec and so the p1 copy has been replaced by this new particular program and when this program it finishes execution now when this terminates now the control and an exit status goes back to the parent so the parent was waiting and now the parent will continue from wherever it had left off so suppose the parent had there is a command like this in the parent process fork this fork system call it returns an integer which is of process id type we know that each process has an has a process id and let's call it pid so whenever the parent is giving the fork system call two processes are returning from the fork system call one is the one return value is sent to the parent and another value is returned to the new process that has been created which is the child process so now this is the parent process which is having a process id of 10 because of this fork a child process has been created and let's assume that the process id of this child process is 15 now the fork system call is returning two values one value it will return to the parent process and to the this will be the process id of the child so the process id of the child which is 15 will be returned to the parent and to the child another value say like let's say 0 is returned to the child so to the child always the same value let's say 0 will be returned now using these values these return values we can distinguish whether it is a parent process or whether it is a child process now after creating a child parent is going to wait and the child process can run it can call the exec system a call to create a to replace this new copy by another program and it will run that new process and the parent will wait for the child to terminate and once the child terminates the parent will run the next instruction let's take a look at uh, this code let's say this is the code of the parent process so here we have the parent process and the parent process is running this code so we have the code over here so we have a process id which is of process id type and now the parent process has given a system call fork and so this fork will create a child process so a child process has been created and this child process is an exact copy of the parent process so this child process is also having exactly the same code now on creation of this child or this fork system call has returned a value pid so one value has been returned to the parent so which is the some value greater than 0 which is the process id of the child and one value pid has been returned to the child which is 0 so this fork system call has returned two values one to the parent which is the pid of the child and one return value to the child which is 
Now, when this instruction was being executed by the parent process because the parent process is running, when this instruction was being executed, the program counter of the process of the, prog uh, of the parent was pointing to the next instruction. So, suppose the parent, the program counter was here. When the child is created, the program counter value would also be exactly the same for the child. So, once this poke has been executed, now either the parent can run or the child can run. Suppose the parent program is running. So, now we are assuming that parent program is running and so it will check if PID is less than 0. So, the to the parent, the PID that has been returned is the PID of the child, so it is greater than 0. If PID is less than 0, that means the child was not created and the fork command failed. So, there was a failure of this system call and it failed. So, there is an error and a 1 will be returned to the system. In this case, no child has been created. But if now it will check the next instruction else if PID is equal to 0. Now the parent process is running. So again PID that has been returned to this parent is not 0. That means it will not go into this environment. So it will come in this environment. So else that means it is there was no error and this is not a child. So now this is since this is a parent process it will go inside and it will wait. That means now it will wait for some exit status and this exit status of null will be returned by the child process. So let's see what will happen if the child process is running. So the child process has also been given the same program counter value and now let's see the child is running the same code. So when the child runs the code, so it checks if PID is less than 0, but this will not be the case in when a child has been created because if a child has been created, PID is 0 for the child. The value that has been returned to the child is 0 and the child has been created that means the folk system fall has been successful. So now the child process is running, it is checking is PID less than 0? No, this was not the case. So it will not go inside this environment. Next it will run this statement, else if PID is 0? Yes, for the child the PID is 0 because this was the return value of the folk system call to the child. So if PID is 0, now the child will enter this environment exec so this again exec lp is from the family of the exec system call and this is the path name and a null pointer which will be finally returned to the parent so the what the child has done is it has called the exec system call and it is running this particular process so it has called for this particular process ls so now this program will be removed and the ls file or the ls program will be called from the given path name and this ls program will start running. So now the original program which was a copy of the parent has been replaced by this program and this ls program has now become a process. This will run and somewhere in this ls program there will be an exit call at the end and when this will terminate, it will return a null value. Now when the child terminates, since the parent was waiting for the null value, the parent will start running and this is the next instruction of the parent code printed child complete or it can be any other instruction and now the parent will start executing its instructions and finally it will terminate. So this is how the exec 
exit and fork system calls work.